The decade is finally coming to a close, and with it comes hundreds upon thousands of decade lists. Movies of the decade, songs of the decade, serial of the decade, and of course, games of the decade. A decade is 10 years, and if you didn't know, 10 years is a lot of time, meaning we've gotten a lot of games over this past decade. So not only is there a lot of just garbage to wade through, there's also a lot of really good games that I didn't get the pleasure of playing or something I might have missed out on. Please keep that in mind when I go through this list. While it's hard to compare gaming decades to one another, I mean you can't put Bubble Bobble versus I Am Bread, are you kidding me? There's no denying that the past 10 years have been historic for the gaming scene. Consoles came and conquered, many releases changed the way we even thought about games in the first place. But enough filler, it's time to crack open the egg and see what's in store for my games of the decade list. 2010 had some of my favorite games of all time, but seeing as I was 10 years old, I really didn't get the chance to experience or play a whole lot. And you'll see that's the case for the first couple of years. Just bear with me and we'll get to the good stuff. Some of my favorites released this year were Dragon Quest IX, Halo Reach, Ultimate Ninja Storm 2, Kirby's Epic Yarn, and Xenoblade Chronicles. Overall, the year was solid for me. Like I said, I didn't play a whole lot, but what I did play was amazing. Dragon Quest IX is still, to this day, one of my favorite games of all time. Halo Reach is an absolute classic, and almost 10 years later, I welcome it with open arms onto my gamer PC. Xenoblade Chronicles is a gorgeous journey and got me one of my most viewed videos ever. Sorry, quick flex. Ultimate Ninja Storm 2 and Kirby's Epic Yarn are also great games, but they don't have the same heart punch as the other three. I'd give 2010 a 6.5 out of 10 of a year. Moving on. Picking it up a little bit, 2011 still doesn't show much in quantity, but what it shows in quality is astounding. Ocarina of Time 3D, Super Mario 3D Land, Minecraft, Terraria, De Blob 2, Kirby's Return to Dream Land, and Portal 2. There was a weird pick on there, I know, so I'll go ahead and get Kirby's Return to Dream Land right out of the way. This is the best Kirby game period, and one of the most fun co-op experiences out there. If you've ever wanted to fight alongside your fellow puffballs and share a kiss or two, this is the game for you. 2011 was also the year of the 3DS release, and Ocarina of Time was the first time I ever got to play it for myself. I had dabbled in the N64 game before, but I never made it to Adult Link on my own. Ocarina of Time 3D actually looks so good and is the perfect way to play it. Super Mario 3D Land is top 5 Mario games for me, need I say more? And for Minecraft and Terraria, the two titans of my blocky childhood, I owe genuinely a lot to Minecraft and while I won't spout a bunch of sappy crap right here because I plan on making a sappy video about it sometime, and we've also got a lot of games to talk about, the game is wonderful and Terraria isn't far behind it on my favorite games of all time list. Honestly, Terraria Raya might be ahead of it purely for its mountain of weapons and armor sets. I said Kirby's Return to Dreamland is one of the most fun co-op experiences out there, but Portal 2 is THE co-op experience. I definitely recommend sitting down with a buddy, grabbing a couple dooskies, and just enjoying the game together. Overall, I'd give 2011 a 7.5 out of 10. Also, De Blob 2 slaps! 2012 is a bit of a sleeper year, I won't lie, but here we go anyways. Nintendo Land, Kid Icarus Uprising, The Walking Dead, New Super Mario Bros. U, New Super Mario Bros. 2, Chivalry and Medieval Warfare, Half Minute Hero, and Sticker Star. Yeah, so for this year I had to kinda lose the word favorite and find things that I played. Nintendo Land is a legitimately great game and a perfect fit to be released alongside the Wii U, which also came out this year, that's uh, pretty cool. New Super Mario Bros. U and New Super Mario Bros. 2 are both fine games, they're fun romps to the Mario world, but they don't exactly have anything great about them going on, and the only reason I put Chivalry on this list was because I remembered watching a lot of my favorite YouTubers sponsored content for the release of the game. Half Minute Hero actually smacks, but again, it's just here because I played it, and Sticker Star, I 
think you know where this is going. Fortunately, this year is redeemed by Kid Icarus Uprising, a crazy well-written super fun 3DS game with kinda want controls, and The Walking Dead. Kid Icarus Uprising is still an awesome game and one of my most played titles. The online multiplayer is surprisingly really fun and I could still recommend this game 7 years later. The Walking Dead has been releasing in an episodic format for many years now, only just wrapping up its final season this past year and it's been a beautiful journey to go on. There were some bumps in the road and a couple parts that were just weird but overall I loved my time spent with Clementine and the legend Lee. Still though, 2012 gets a 4.5 out of 10, sorry. Now we're reaching the point where I simply can't talk about every game I liked or played, because otherwise this video would be crazy super long. So if I mention it and don't go in depth about it, I apologize. Especially because 2013 was a slapper of a year. A Link Between Worlds, Super Mario 3D World, Gunman Clive, Resident Evil 6, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, Animal Crossing New Leaf, Grand Theft Auto 5, SteamWorld Dig, Wind Waker HD, Ultimate Ninja Storm 3, Knack, Rayman Legends, Pokemon X and Y, and the widely recognized worst game of all time, Ride to Hell Retribution. Wowie zowie if this wasn't the goddamn year of the 3DS. The PS4 and Xbox One were released this year and damn if Nintendo wasn't prepared to entice you with their little baby portable console. A Link to the Past has been my favorite Zelda game since the Dark Ages, so when I saw A Link Between Worlds I was absolutely floored, dog, And it did not disappoint. It's a little short honestly, but that's just because it's so much fun and I just want to keep playing it at all times. Super Mario 3D World takes the new style of games and flips it into something much more unique while still keeping that Mario joy. Dark Moon I thought was a solid sequel until I reached this dumb ice boss and then I never played the game again. Animal Crossing New Leaf, holy oh my god did I put so much time into this baby and I cannot wait for New Horizons. GTA 5, <laughs> SteamWorld Dig is like Terraria meets the Wild West, don't worry, I already signed you up. Wind Waker HD gave me the opportunity to actually play Wind Waker, and I don't know how the Pokemon community feels about X and Y, but I adore this game, and to this day, it's the Pokemon game I've spent the most time in. Also, Gunman Clive is very short, but it's a really neat little cowboy platformer, and don't worry, I- 2013, like I said, was a slapper of year, so I'll be giving it an 8 out of 10. Maybe a 9 out of 10? Nah, 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 nah. We'll save the 9 for later. 8 out of 10. 2014 is kinda whack. Some solid stuff, but only a few standout titles. Nidhogg, Hearthstone, Mario Kart 8, Half Minute Hero 2, Shovel Knight, Five Nights at Freddy's, Smash 3DS and Wii U, I Am Bread, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, The Binding of Isaac Rebirth, Hyrule Warriors, and Fantasy Life. Five Nights at Freddy's is insanely popular. I only ever played the first one, but I got pretty invested in the lore of it all. Shovel Knight was my 2014 Game of the Year winner, and rightfully so. It's a wonderful little blast from the past, and they've continued to update it with bigger and better DLC as time has gone on. The Binding of Isaac Rebirth is a poppin' little dungeon crawler where you play as this sack of baby. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire were games I was very excited for before release, but when I actually had them in my hands, man was it hard to get them started. Once I did, I had a fun time, but I don't know, there was just something not quite as fun as the originals. Mario Kart 8 was Mario Kart, you can't go wrong there. And Fantasy Life is a lovely little game and one of my favorites on here, but unfortunately not many people played it and it doesn't look like we'll be getting any kind of sequel, at least not here in the US. And I don't really want to talk about 2014 anymore, so let's slap a 5.5 out of 10 on there and call it good. Before moving on, I want to take this small chunk of time and really get all my virginity out there. I don't keep up with many seasonal anime, I'm not a fan of your Kawabunga Dragon Maids, and if you are, that's totally cool, but I want to mention some of my personal favorites over the last decade. Attack on Titan, insanely well written story, stunning animation, it takes everything you thought it was going to be in season 1 and flips it and bakes it in the oven at 350 and then lets it cool on the top of a mountain. Mob Psycho 100, super hilarious show, likable and fun characters, and while Attack on Titan is just beautiful in general, you honestly can't top the unique colors and insaneness that is Mob's animation style. Full Metal Alchemist, Brotherhood. Just my absolute favorite anime of all time. I love it so much. It's so simple, yet still so good, and I've watched it like a hundred times. No, I don't have a problem. Dr. Stone. The story is already quite interesting, and combine that with tons of genuinely interesting characters with names and stories and how they take us step by step through every creation they make. I mean, damn, it's like the learning channel. It's insane. Demon Slayer. Easily my favorite anime of the year. The whole show is just so rad and so incredibly shown in. Episode 19 is amazing. I've only ever read two <coughs> mangas before, and those are Attack on Titan and Demon Slayer. Both of those shows absolutely slap, and I can't wait to see more manga moments animated. A few others I enjoy are My Hero Academia, Ping Pong, One Punch Man, Erased, Your Name, Fire Force, and even the occasional Sword Art Online. Yes, I know I suck. Now back to the video games. 
I'm happy to say that 2015 was a pretty solid year for me. We had Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, Majora's Mask 3D, Robot Roller Derby Disco Dodgeball, Whoa Dave, Mario Maker, Undertale, Triforce Heroes, Xenoblade Chronicles X, Rocket League, and Box Boy. Other titles I didn't personally play include Dragon Ball Xenoverse, Sword Art Online Re, Had a Full Boyfriend, PewDiePie Legend of the Brofist, and Star Wars Battlefront. The new 3DS launch at the start of this year, and with it came Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate and Majora's Mask 3D. Monster Hunter 4U was not for me. <laughs> it was a great game, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I would Monster Hunter Generations. And just like the other two Zelda remakes I mentioned, I had never fully beaten Majora's Mask until the 3DS version came out, so it helped me to finally beat this game, and I loved it. Rocket League taught me how to drive. Thank you, Rocket League. Triforce Heroes wasn't as fun as Four Swords Adventures, but I would still end up having some crazy fun nights with my bros. Undertale was my 2015 Game of the Year winner, and rightfully so. Not only does it have super fun gameplay, but the story is crazy well written, and it's only like 5 or 6 hours long. Mario Maker surprised me. When I heard about it, I really didn't think much of it at all. Until the Nintendo World Championships where the game was shown off, and hot dog did it look fun. And hot dog it was fun. Xenoblade Chronicles X was a fun game to run around in, but more like Xenoblade Chronicles X, excuse me sir, can you please leave? And Box Boy was a 3DS eShop title with fun puzzles solving. You play as a box. 2015 gets a big, 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 big 7 out of 10. I remember 2016 is a pretty bad year for games, and through my research I determined I was kind of right. See, there were actually quite a few games that I enjoyed, but not many that really blew me away. Fire Emblem Fates, Stardew Valley, Pokemon Tournament, Enter the Gungeon, Pokemon Go, Overwatch, Kirby Planet Robobot, Monster Hunter Generations, Starbound, Dragon Quest 7, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, Pokemon Sun and Moon, and Shantae Half Genie Hero. Other titles I didn't personally play but was interested in include Super Hot, Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games, Hyrule Warriors Legends, Hyper Light Drifter, Star Fox Zero, Mighty Number no. 9, Box Box Boy, Inside, No Man's Sky, Paper Mario Color Splash, and Dragon Quest Builders. On paper, that's a pretty fire lineup, but overall only a few that really wowed me. Stardew Valley was my game of the year, big boy, and now even more so after having put in even more time on the Switch version. Fire Emblem Fates is like three different games of which I played Birthright and Conquest, and I enjoyed both of them for different reasons. Pokemon Tournament was like one hour of my life that I will never get back. Pokemon Go is a mobile game, but damn was it fun to go out and play Pokemon with the bros and meet up with some strangers. Dragon Quest 7 I ended up never beating, because even though it's a good game, it just doesn't end. Starbound is like if you took Terraria, made it less fun, but give it a space aesthetic so like it kinda balances out, kinda. Overwatch is like the worst community, it's really hard to play a comp game without being called some gamer slur, but still I'm always able to enjoy my time with it. Xenoverse 2 was great, Pokemon Sun and Moon were decent, Shantae was pretty good, and Monster Hunter Generations was dope. They took almost everything I didn't like about 4U and just made it better. Kirby's Life as a Teenage Robot is a solid game all around, but it's a little bland at times. Overall, I'm giving the year a 7.2 out of 10 due to the sheer amount of good games, but taking away a .5 because the quality of the games is questionable. So 6.7. If you thought 2013 was a good year, 2017 might be the biggest and best year for gaming period. Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, Hollow Knight, Metroid Samus Returns, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Dragon Quest 8, Sonic Mania, ARMS, Fortnite, Golf Story, Destiny 2, SteamWorld Dig 2, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Platoon 2, Fire Emblem Echoes, Blossom Tales, LEGO Worlds, and PUBG. Other titles I was interested in but never got a chance to play include Ukulele, Dragon Quest Heroes 2, Ever Oasis, Fire Emblem Warriors, Sonic Forces, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Persona 5, and Nier Automata, or Automata, whatever. Excuse my language, but holy frick, dude. I've used the words quality and quantity a lot in this video, but damn, this year has both. Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey right off the bat are two absolute powerhouses, two of the best games in their respective series. There is so much that can be said for these, but I have to stop myself or the video would never end. Hollow Knight, I've made two videos on this damn game and I've got another one in the works that involves it. I love this game. Metroid Samus Returns is one of the few Metroid games I've played, and while it isn't insane, it's a very solid adventure with really fun movement. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is Mario Kart, you can't go wrong there. Sonic Mania has the best soundtrack of any Sonic game, and actually made people excited for the blue blur again. ARMS was a game that I played for 15 hours. Golf Story and Blossom Tales are two games that deserve a whole lot more love than they got. Both I played on the Switch eShop and thoroughly enjoyed. Golf Story is legitimately hilarious, well written, and a blast to play. Blossom Tales is a lot like a bite-sized version of Link's Awakening or Minish Cap. 
it's just as fun as your standard Zelda adventure. This year was also when Battle Royales really started to pick up even more in terms of popularity. PUBG was my Battle Royale of choice as I didn't get into Fortnite until the very beginning of 2018, but I love hate both of these games. There's still a lot I could say about this year. Some of you might think this year was average and that's totally okay, but I personally think this year was insane and it would have been even more whack if I had gotten to play some of the other titles. 2017 gets a fat 9.5 out of 10. After a year like that, we've got to slow it down a little bit. But only a little bit, because this year had Celeste, Dragon Ball Fighters, Monster Hunter World, Sea of Thieves, Moonlighter, Mario Tennis Aces, Mega Man X Legacy Collection, Overcooked 2, The Messenger, Deltarune, Pokemon Let's Go, Smash Ultimate, and Super Mario Party. Other interest me game include God of War, Red Dead Redemption 2, Dead Cells, A Way Out, Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Striker, to Blob 2 Remastered, and My Hero 1's Justice. Also Spider-Man. If 2017 was Nintendo's year, then this was certainly Sony's year. I unfortunately didn't have a chance to play some of those big titles, but still I gotta give credit where credit is due. Of the games I played, Celeste and the Messenger were two big standouts to me. Movement as fun as Hollow Knight, gameplay as simple and fun as Shovel Knight, hard as balls platforming. They both were killer titles and I was happy to have them on my Switch. Delta Room was really exciting to just see pop up out of nowhere and I can't wait to see the other chapters. Mar Mario Tennis Aces was the first and only Mario Tennis game I've played, and it actually smacks, I won't lie. Never have I ever had so much fun staying up at 3am trying to spike a ball into Rosalina's stupid face. Super Mario Party was a very safe and okay Mario Party game. Pokemon Let's Go actually really surprised me as well by just how much fun it was. And Super Smash Bros Ultimate is obviously the best game on this list, that's not really a competition. Never has a collaboration between games and companies been done like this before, and we might never see something like it again. It's a wonderful addition to the Smash series. Sea of Thieves I didn't expect to enjoy, but once you look past how god-awful ugly the characters are, the game has a lot to hold. Getting into ship fights and crack duels has never been so fun. 2018 was a bit lacking in the Nintendo department in my opinion, but it still made up for it with huge titles like Smash Ultimate and indie representation like The Messenger. I'll be giving the year an 8.5 out of 10. Well, we finally made it to the last year of the decade. Let's see what kind of games 2019 had in store for us. New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, Apex Legends, Dragon Marked for Death, Tetris 99, Fitness Boxing, Ring Fit Adventure, Yoshi's Crafted World, Super Mario Maker 2, Luigi's Mansion 3, Pokemon Sword and Shield, Dauntless, Cadence of Hyrule, Dragon Quest Builders 2, Link's Awakening, Dragon Quest 11S, and Killer Queen Black. Other games include Kingdom Hearts 3, Jump Force, Katana Zero, Mortal Kombat 11, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Death Stranding, Outer Worlds, and Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, Sekiro. I don't remember. Apex Legends was okay. I wasn't very good at it, but I still enjoyed playing it from time to time. Tetris 99 is certainly on my Switch right now. Fitness Boxing and Ring Fit Adventure ended up being genuinely fun fitness games, especially Ring Fit. The game can be pretty corny with the story, but damn, it gives you a really good workout if you really go for it. Super Mario Maker 2 was my most played Switch game of the year. I spent the first two days doing nothing but making levels. Unfortunately, Online with Friends wasn't added until months later, and at that point, the hype had died down significantly, and I haven't really gotten to play that many co-op online levels. Luigi's Mansion 3 I really, really want to put more time into. I've only played the first 5 or so hours of it and I really enjoy it, but I just haven't sat down to finish it yet. Pokemon's a similar story. I'm on the 5th gym, so I still got a little bit of a ways to go, but I've been having fun with it. Especially the raid bat. <clears throat> Whoa. Especially the raid battles. The raid battles give you this candy that can allow you to super buff up your Pokemon, like using a ton of rare candies at once. I would never use those on my Pokemon, but lesser gamers can have the option. Link's Awakening again actually gave me the chance to play through a Zelda game. While others didn't like the art style, I adored it, and I really hope they remake the Oracle games in this style. This year was pretty lame. We had some really great and solid titles like Super Mario Maker 2 and Luigi's Mansion 3, but no really huge releases. This year served a lot more as a buffer year because 2020 is already looking like it's going to be another 2017. Overall, I'm giving 2019 a 7.5 out of 10, so still pretty great. The last decade has been an amazing time. I've gotten to grow up and experience these games and make memories with some of my best friends in the world. We've lost some great people in the gaming community over the last couple years, and a lot has changed in the world since 2010. But still, we keep moving forward, and we get stronger with every step we take. I look forward to seeing the fun times, memories, and bonds we will create when we all step foot into 2020. And maybe you'll see another one of these videos from me in 2030. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Have a fantastic 2020.